Ready to go? Let me know when you're ready. Uh, we are good to go. Thank you very much. This time I'll call to order the meeting of November 2nd, 2020. City Attorney, is there anything you'd like to discuss before we go to closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just to say that if the City Council so moves, it will go into closed session to discuss those items agendized for closed session discussion, specifically item number one, conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9, Neil Jones Food Company, Inc. versus City of Hollister, San Benito County Superior Court Case Number CU2000074, and Item Number Two, Conference of Legal Counsel Anticipated Litigation, Significant Exposure to Litigation Pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.9b. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Do we have any uh, public comment? There are no, sp oh, we have one speaker. You do have one speaker. Is is this for the closed session item? Yeah. Okay, never never mind. We don't have any um, speakers for closed session. Thank you. Is there a motion to move to closed session? Uh, actually, I think you're going to. Well, oh, you can part. You know, you're right. You can participate in part of it. So that's correct. Go ahead and make your motion. I move the. I make a motion. We move to closed session. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Will you do the? Yeah. Okay, I'll wait.
of November 2nd, 2020. Vice Mayor Spencer, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, I will. Stand, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty for all. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Member Resendez. Present. Vice Mayor Spencer. Here. Mayor Velasquez. Here. Council Member Lenore. Present. City Manager Miller. Here. City Attorney Epperson. Here. Interim Police Chief Reynoso. Here. The amended agenda for the City of Hollister City Council regular meeting of November 2nd, 2020 was posted on the bulletin board on October 28, 2020 at 5 p.m. per government code section 54954.2. Thank you very much. City Attorney, will you please report out from closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The report out of closed session is that the City Council discussed in closed session those items agendized for closed session consideration and direction was given to staff. The City Council recessed from closed session at 6.21 p.m. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. We'll move now to the consent agenda. Are there any items the Council would like to pull? Do we have any from the public? No, we don't have this any time. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt the consent agenda as presented. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We are now going to move to public input. This is the time for anyone in the audience to speak on any item not on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council. Speaker cards are available in the lobby and are to be completed and given to the city clerk before speaking. When the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name and city for the record and speak to the city council. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes with a maximum of 30 minutes per subject. Please note state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking action on any item not on the agenda. Do we have any speaker cards? Yes, um, the first speaker is Susan Loeb. Susan, you can go ahead. Hi, uh, Susan Loeb, resident of Hollister. <clears throat> can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great, I want to thank you all for your service. I know that uh, things may be changing or not changing soon. So I just want to thank you all for your time and your diligence in being city council members and part of the city council. Um, there was recently uh, an auction that the friends did via uh, virtual means. And I wanted to thank the people that donated and our bidders who won these auction items. It was very helpful to the library and all the proceeds will go directly to the library and its outreach. Meanwhile, I think most people may or may not know that the library recently was awarded a grant for five hundred thousand dollars which is very exciting and this grant was um there were like over nora and aaron were able to put this together but there were over 1,000 applicants for the grant and only two libraries in california were chosen so we feel very fortunate to have this grant the funding will allow for digital services to be expanded and also there will be kiosks and self-service and remote learning. There'll also be like STEM projects available through remote lockers. So uh, increased Wi-Fi. very excited about this grant that the um, library was able to put together. We'd also like to say that tomorrow there will be an announcement at the Board of Supervisors in regards to um, something recently that happened at the library that's very exciting and uh, I hope you can attend. So. Thank you so much for your time and all your community efforts. Thank you. Next speaker is Linda Lamp. 
Lampy. Lampy. Good evening, members of the council, Mr. Mayor. Thank you all for your service. Uh, and I know it's not an easy job, and especially in times like this. And sometimes it seems like it can be a thankless task. And that's the situation <laughs> that my husband, Patrick, and I find ourselves in. We're the directors of Hollister Community Outreach in my father's house. We've been providing services to the underserved and the homeless who are extremely underserved in our community for many years. To date, we have seen 202 people permanently off the streets with our efforts, which we don't believe in homelessness. So we work to get people to that point where they can become uh, housed uh, successfully. Most of the people we work with, we send to long-term drug recovery programs. We know that housing is not always the answer until a person has dealt with their addictions and know how to do that. However, there are many other people mothers and children, a lot of people that most people don't even see that we see and the times are getting worse. Having said all of that, we've also expanded our services. My heart goes out to uh, migrant farm workers and people. I grew up on a farm in rural Tennessee. I know how hard working on a farm is. So we expanded our services and last week we served over 5,000 people in this community with nutritious food from the USDA farmers to families. That was 28 and a half tons of food. We get no money from the city, the council. Don't worry, I'm not here to ask you all for money. <laughs> what I'm here to ask you for is help. The flu season is coming. Uh, I called the county uh, health department last year. Uh, Veronica Guerrero usually helps us with the flu shots at my father's house. That's not possible. They were out of flu vaccine. She referred me to Safeway. Safeway corporate donated 100 vaccines. What I've been trying to get, and I talked to the mayor ex extensively, I tried to get him and different people to help me find a place that we could give the vaccines that's close to them. He suggested that I put people in my car and drive them to the shelter. Come on, I'm 74 years old, I'm a breast cancer survivor, my husband is a, a leukemia, he's on chemo. How could I shelter in place putting people in my car and driving them there? Why can't we go? I don't care who gets the credit for it. If the city council wants to get the credit, whoever. We just want to live in a safe, healthy, whole community because if they, if the, if people get the flu, it's not going to stay in just the homeless community. It's going to affect all of us. I see I'm about out of time, so um, what I would like for you all to consider too is I'd like to come back and talk with you about helping us with our thrift store that we can have outside sales. I think it would be wonderful for the community. We need the income in order to keep doing what we're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Patrick Lampy. Good evening, council members. I'm Patrick Lampy and uh, the husband of Linda who just spoke and uh, uh, again, just 10 seconds to finish her subject. What we're, it's closer. okay, yeah. yes. What we're really looking for is a place that we can distribute it, these uh, uh, flu vaccines. And we'd asked to use Dunn Park and was, was told, no, you can't do it. And um, the result of that is we found out that it was okay to go have a karate class and other things at Dunn Park. We're here, we're trying to, distribute you know 100 flu vaccines to people that uh, that really need it um, the item I really wanted to talk about is um, I've talked to uh, uh, the previous city manager and um, uh, about being able to display uh, items outside of our uh, thrift store at uh, worth saving I don't know if you know about the location but it's where Pat's place used to be we're at the corner of 5th uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sally Street. We're directly across the street from the fire department and to the uh, east of us, directly across the street, is the industrial area of the cannery where, where their loading dock is. What we would like to do is to be able to take items, larger items such as furniture and things, take them out and put them on the east side of our store. 
Um, the description that I'd had council members come and look at the, the east side. The east side of the store, um, about 60 feet of it would be usable. The sidewalk, I think, is six or seven feet wide. We would not be using that. And then just to the east of the sidewalk is a, an eight foot by 60 foot black topped area that would be ideal to be able to put out tables and buffets and things like that, larger items that we would take from the store, display them while we are open at night, we would take those items back in. So we're, again, asking for help. The, the money that uh, every nickel that comes out of worth saving is spent and used to pay our rent and support the, the work we're doing uh, with the homeless and with the other people that are underserved. So what we're asking for is to be able to do the same display that you're now going to do on San Benito Street for the restaurants and others. We're next to the industrial area. We're, I think we would do a great job if we were allowed to do that. My wife and I are members of NARTS, which is the National Association of uh, Reseller and Thrift Stores. We have toured many, many thrift stores on the East Coast when we went back to the convention. Many, many of them display most of their goods outside their stores. Thank you for your consideration and have a blessed evening. Thank you, sir. Rick Perez. Good evening, Mayor, Council, few persons, staff. Um, I just really wanted to actually thank uh, all the emergency responders for all that's going on. I know there's a lot going on. But what I really wanted to talk about was how beautiful San Benito Street is starting to look. It looks really, really good. It's, it's, it's coming together. Um, or some of our residential streets are not as beautiful. And I'd like to see Hollister raise its standards to having beautiful streets all over. I think it's, uh, it's great for our businesses, but I think our residents also count and we should raise our standard and have some better roads, um, better paved roads. Um, I know we just went through a process and I think it was kind of a learning experience, but um, I look forward to um, Hollister having beautiful roads. And again, thank you first responders and thank you council people and staff. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Courtney Evans. Good evening, my name is Courtney Evans. I'm a resident of San Benito County and a business owner. Um, and I first want to give my heartfelt thanks to the um, Hollister Firefighters, Cal Fire, Monterey Fire, Salinas Fire, and also Pains that graciously made breakfast for um, those people who fought those fires all night long. I have a question for our city manager. I'm curious of who um, they will be hiring as an arson investigator, if we have one in the city, if that's in the process. Is our chief of police gonna make a statement? Many people have reported vandalism in last night. In addition to the fire, safety of this community is a concern. Will our public information officer make a statement? Um, I also want to bring light to the California Superior Court ruled in favor of the two assemblymen in their lawsuit challenging Gavin Newsom's abuse of power. Um, I think that that is very important in moving forward in how we handle um, what's going on in um, our communities. And I also wanted to make it a point um, with this, the, the city council, um, I'm still waiting for emails and public requests that have been put out. Um, and I spoke with Kat, the city council, Mr. Epperstein, um, Mr. Jason, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, so I would also like an update on that. And um, I hope that everybody stays safe and I hope that everybody can um, pull together a, as a community and support the people who've been vandalized, their businesses have been taken, and um, it's, it's very uncertain times right now. I hope everyone stays safe. Thank you. All right, Emily Sko. Sko. 
Hi, good evening. Um, yeah, Emily Scout. I was just calling to, um, I just wanted to bring attention. I, I thought it was weird. Um, to, so two of my friends went in right now downtown to go vote. Uh, registered voters went in, both in obviously different booths, cast their vote. Their vote was counted. Um, while walking out, my Caucasian friend, her husband is Hispanic, and was handed an extra ballot and said, go ahead and vote again. And he was a little confused and said, why, why would I vote again? And they said, go, go ahead. And so he was pissed. He ripped it up and took off his mask and said, why would I vote again when my vote was just counted? And, and now you guys are telling me I can go in and vote again. He left, he will be filing a police report and he will be taking it up with Francisco, who is the voting elections manager, apparently in charge. We called and talked to him as well. Um, that was about an hour ago that took place right downtown, probably a couple blocks from you guys. Um, and then another friend, 19, first time voting, went in with his friend. They did their voting, their, their ballot was counted. He walked out and was also handed as he was walking out, go ahead and you can go again, go vote again. He was confused. It was his first time voting and thinking, why would, why would I vote again? Was my vote counted? Um, so he left, but he was also going to file a police report. Just so just bringing light to that, that there's some voter fraud going on. Um, it's, it's just odd. I hope that you guys, I don't know if you can go down and observe or take part in it. Um, but I did just want to bring that to your guys' attention. Uh, we don't care who you vote for, but go vote and do it legally. And the people volunteering to help should also be making sure that the legal process is intact and they were sworn to to uphold that. So that's it. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. There are no more speakers. Thank you very much. We're going to move now to city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Sorry, wasn't quite prepared. So I wanted, if anybody that is planning on to do anything outside on their streets or on the sidewalks, uh, we beg for you to call our planning department to inquire about an a encroachment permit or temporary use permit. The main reason is that we don't want uh, our traffic blocked or uh, citizens going having to get off the sidewalk to into the road, which could cause a, a endangerment to our uh, citizens so the planning department will look at those permits to make sure uh, that in any activity is ha happening in a, a safe manner um, second for our uh, for arson investigation our fire marshal is in charge of that we don't have to hire anybody uh, we, our fire ma marshal is very capable of his job uh, and we stand very much behind him and then plus our public safety chiefs with our fire and police put out notices on a very timely basis when it is appropriate. So I feel like they have done a very good job at communicating with our public on the, the numerous items that has happened uh, of late. So I want to thank them for that. Oh. Is that it, sir? Chief would like to add something. The chief. I would just like to mm -hmm. add, uh, recently we just put out a press release uh, thanking all the agencies that are assisting us uh, the fire chief uh, requested Monterey County uh, team task force to help. They're helping. Cal Fire is out here early today, helping all day, um, and their investigating team. And we also have uh, ATF, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms um, investigators that are offering their assistance um, and coordinating all of this investigation. Thank, thank you, you, sir. And thank you for all your hard work today. All right, we're going to move to item D2. No, no training to report at this time. Thank you, sir. We'll move to item E1, public hearing. Yes, for this item, uh, like most cities, uh, we have a different economic, uh, uh, I would say, developers or uh, different individuals seeking uh, incentives to to make their projects uh, uh, viable. Uh, this, this is the same thing with the Hawkins group with the Hollister Farms. They are unable to make the Hollister Farms economically feasible without any economic incentive fr from the city of Hollister. The purpose of the incentive is to help the group complete their inline box stores at the Hollister location. 
So as part of that economic program uh, that we will, the, or economic incentive, we would be giving them an economic incentive of $4.256 million. That incentive would comprise of using the city's economic reserve fund of 525,000, using, in, in, uh, using some storm water and loo fees that, that have been on hold, and then withholding 75% of the sales, produce, sales tax produced from the Holster Farm site until their construction of inline stores are completed. So we would hold those in reserve. And then uh, the remaining difference once the inline stores are built, we would do an inner fund loan between the general fund and the stormwater fund uh, at, at an estimated amount of $3.3 million uh, plus interest at the city's uh, uh, investment, or sorry, the local agency investment fund rate from the state investment pool, which is approximately 1%. And uh, we would repay that amount uh, using 75% of the sales tax generated from the Hollister Farm site. The, so the estimated payment of that would be 5.75 years, which our concern is if that, if the, uh, the current developers are not able to, uh, to make this, uh, or make, be able to not have this incentive that it might be five to six years before those in, inline stores are built. So the, the incentive of that, we see that about $45 million in sales would be pr produced from that location, bringing in about $900,000 a year in both of the, the Bradley Burns sales tax and the Measure W sales tax. Plus, there would be an estimated 300 to 350 full-time and part-time jobs created from this development. Mm -hmm. And then finally, if developers aren't able to uh, complete a project for retail, we are concerned that they would be seeking to do residential projects, which we do not want in the, that location. We want to make sure we kept it as a commercial site. So um, with that, representatives of the Hawkins Group is here if you have any further questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Is there any questions from council? Do we have any speakers for the public hearing? There are no speakers. At this time, I'll, I will close public hearing. Any other comments or questions from council? I'll, I'll make a comment. Go ahead. I want the, the city of Hollister residents to know that we are this close. This was a little bit of an unfortunate situation, but it's so worthy to bring you these products that we so desperately need in this town and the jobs. And I figure 25% of sales tax is better than zero for no sales tax. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but I think it's the right way to go. We will benefit from it greatly in the long run. And then this sends a message to the rest of the commercial uh, uh, developers uh, that we're serious. Now, I'm not saying we can di give them a deal all the time, but this shows that we're, we're taking it serious that we really want to be considered as a commercial destination for, for this area. We have a large county, 66,000 people, and you know, you build a new store, people come from out of town. They're gonna come over here and shop. Wouldn't that be nice? I can't let this get away from uh, this town. Uh, not on my watch. I would never vote to let that get away. So I do support this, um, this request. Thank you so much. Thank you, any other comments or questions? Is there a motion? I move that we adopt resolution number 2020-213 as stated. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We will now move to item F1. Good evening, uh, Mayor Velasquez, members of the city council. Uh, tonight is the second reading of ordinance number 1198, an ordinance of the city of Hollister amending chapter 17.16.020, 
of the Hollister Municipal Code regarding accessory residential uses and structures. If adopted tonight, uh, this would this uh, new amendment to the code would take place from in 30 days. So if there's any questions, uh, I'm here to answer them. Any questions from council? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Is there a motion? I make a motion that we accept resolution number 2022-14 as stated. Wait, who's the ordinance second reading? Go back to what? It's an ordinance. We're gonna we're gonna waive the yeah, full reading. Yeah, your F F one oh. it's ordinance number one one nine eight. May may I make a motion? Yes. I I uh, move that we read by title only and waive the full reading of ordinance no uh, number uh, eleven ninety eight. Was it uh, to amend the accessory residential uses and structures. Thank you. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll move to item F2. That's the rest of it. That will be Maria. Good evening, Mayor and um, Council Members. The item before you tonight is for the approval of a cannabis cultivation regulatory permit for 3GM Incorporated. It's located at 1891 Airway Drive. The City Council approved a resolution number 2021-96 cannabis use permit at the City Council meeting of October 5th of 2020, pursuant to the cannabis this ordinance 1179 section 5.42.040 issuance of a regulatory permit is subject to the to the approval by the city council this approval again will allow the applicant to commence operations contingent upon all conditions of approval being met staff recommends that the city council adopt a resolution approving a regulatory permit for 3gm inc to operate a cannabis cultivation facility at 1891 Airway Drive. If there are any questions for staff, I'm available to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any questions? Do we have any speaker cards? There are no speakers. Is there a motion? I move that we approve resolution, uh, we adopt resolution number 2020-214 as stated. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. Motion and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll now move to reports city council members regarding their committees. Council member Lenore. Okay, yes. I do have something to report along the lines of the AAA, which is the uh, area agency on area aging, <laughs> excuse me, agency on area aging. And, and today I want to talk about a little bit about the isolation forum that I, I attended on the October 21st, because uh, it kind of links in with the AAA. And uh, uh, the topic of the day was social isolation as it relates to seniors. Um, uh, when we have social isolation, it, 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 it leads to things like loneliness will lead to health complications. Uh, isolation leads to unhealthy habits. You know, when you, uh, isolation, uh, loneliness increases in Alzheimer's, and isolation also leads to in instances of elder abuse. Lonely seniors assume the worst. They're less opt optimistic for their future. 60% of seniors see their quality of life uh, uh, decreased. Um, there was a doctor, a Dr. Ballin, that spoke about social isolation. He mentioned that the wildfires caused even more isolation. Uh, they also noted that rural communities have a higher, higher percentage of isolation. So we have a very rural community. Um, they just wanted to make sure, they wanted to promote awareness uh, to, to the issue. It's a real issue if you think about it. 
Um, we have a lot of aging seniors. I know you've heard me say that before in San Benito County, and uh, we don't do enough for them. We do a lot of things. We do a lot of stuff for youth. We do a lot of stuff here and there, but I rarely see the seniors come up. So, and I know we fund the seniors, uh, the Havana San Antonio. So for that, I'm very grateful, but um, I hope that we can assist more in the future uh, to uh, help the AAA, Clay Kemp, uh, as the advocates for our seniors. Uh, that's that one. Um, then um, uh, AMBAG on the off 14th, I attend the AMBAG. We're getting very close now to adopting the regional growth forecast, which is based on population, housing, and job statistics. I believe they come from the Department of Finance. Um, the county had, at the, after the last meeting, the county did have some concerns. So they did meet with AMBAG uh, last week. Their concerns are being addressed. I believe they're reworking some numbers, which prompted me to check with staff to make sure that we're comfortable with our regional growth forecast. Uh, they, they seem to think we are. They'll look at it one more time because we're gonna take the vote on the next meeting. And, and this has to do with not funding, but this is what they utilize to plan the projects. Uh, so it's very important that we have the, the data accurate. And that's all I have for my committees. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Spencer. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Council Member Resendez. Nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I do want to report from COG. We had something happen this week, uh, some really good news. The uh, actual timeline for Highway 156 construction is now scheduled for this next summer. This happened. Um, there was uh, a lot of issues with the right of way and ongoing lawsuits, but it has all been cleared now. So construction on Highway 156 from the Alameda to Mitchell Reunion will begin next summer. So that is really big news. That's something that's been uh, in the works for many, many years. So happy to uh, report that to the public. With that, we'll move to informational reports from city council members. Council okay. member Lenore. Okay, well, I, uh, uh, Saturday was Halloween and I attended uh, a little of volunteering. I wanted to spend some time with the Tina from City Rec there, and we went to the airport, and we had a we had a line of uh, cars uh, coming through for their treat bags, and it was just the best to see all the kids dressed up. Because where I live there on San Benito, I only got four trick or treaters, and I kind of had to reel them in. So I was really happy <laughs> to see the kids all at the airport, and everybody had a good time. And HDA was there. It was. Uh, uh, color, Flying Colors, uh, Dance Academy, I believe. Uh, the uh, Hollister Hills was there. There was a couple more down the way, but uh, everybody enjoyed it. Uh, so I left there and I got a phone call that there was a rather rambunctious political rally at Kmart. I said, I don't care. Political rallies are cool. I don't, that's fine. As long as people are obeying the laws and uh, you know, not, not making trouble. I, I certainly didn't mind that, but later on in the evening, I looked into the Benito Link and I saw the photos. I saw the photos and I was very sad to see all the people breaking the law on the mask mandate. It's required now. It, it, we didn't ask you. We said you need to wear them. It, you're breaking the law. And I thought about it it was very depressing for me to work very hard on the council. That wasn't an easy decision. I feel like it was, be it was the best decision for the majority of the city. Um, I got issues with it and I'll tell you, it's just because, all right, the adults are breaking the law, but your kids are there and they're breaking the law. I was raised to follow the laws. Even the ones you don't like, you're still supposed to follow the law. So. I was very disappointed to see that flagrant non-mask wearing uh, sort of deflated me. Um, so I just wanted to point out that it is a mandate and you are breaking the law. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Spencer.
You need to press on mute. We'll go ahead and go with you, Councilmember Sendez. No, I got it. I got you it. Got it. You, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Roland. I thought I had um, uh, pressed it. It's okay. I'm used to it. My students. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank all the first responders who helped Hollister today. A huge thank you to Hollister Fire for an outstanding job. You put your life on the line for our community and I don't feel you get enough credit. A huge shout out to Paynes for feeding our firefighters. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want to say that um, I am very disappointed in the negative attitude and comments that I have been seeing recently on social media um, I'm just really upset that our community is so torn. Um, I want people to understand that if we need, we need to get together and we can't do that. One of the things that I've heard through this whole, through this whole election season is that we need to bring civility back to this council. And I agree wholeheartedly, we do need to bring civility back. But how can we when our own community is not abiding by the same rules? I have seen people being bashed because of their opinion on social media, being bashed because they support one, one candidate and they don't support the other. I've seen comments where community members' intelligence has been questioned They've been called idiots in all different kinds of names. This needs to stop. We all need to get on the same page. Whoever you vote for, that's your business. It's not mine, it's not none of ours, but it's not right that people are being called out and they're called names. Um, I, I'm just very disappointed in our community right now. We just, just very disappointed in the name calling. It needs to stop and it needs to stop now. Is that it, Ms. Spencer? Yes, it is, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Resendez. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, you know, just wanna give my a shout out to uh, the rec department. I, I got to attend two of the um, Halloween drive-in movie nights with my daughter. Um, it was really special for us, for our family, and I'm sure for a lot of other families. It was like, um, I just, I really just want to recognize their efforts that you guys did to put that on. Um, I saw a lot of my students out there. It was a fun, family-friendly, safe event. And then the Keys Club kids were out there also helping to volunteer. So it's just really nice to see us come together and to be safe and, and you know, just bring some nice uh, events to the community in a time that it's so desperately needed. Um, again, like uh, Council Member Lenore had said also, I was out there with the mayor um, volunteering on Saturday for the sweet, uh, I always mess up that name, trick or treat, treat sweet, sweet treats. Treat. I think I got it right, <laughs> Mr. Yeah. City Manager. Um, I think we've done it. I think my partner has done it before with his business. Um, so we participated a couple times in a row. Um, it's always such a great time. Of course, this time it was a little bit different. We're, we're all, all adapting to COVID, right? But it was really sweet and really special. Um, it was just very wholesome. Again, I love these things that we're doing. I can't wait to see um, what the HGA does out there with the lights on parade. And um, and I really like the fact that we were involved in that too. I, I really did because we got to see the public and talk to them and it was very special. So thank you to the rec department and all the staff for that. And um, just as was probably mentioned earlier, um, I just want to extend my extreme sadness about you know hearing about the recent fires that happened in our city today. Um, it was very tragic and, and shocking, I would say. Um, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to the businesses that were affected. And and I just, the one thing that, that I can say that was good that came out of this is how quickly our community does come together in these instances and how supportive they are. I did see that they're raising money um, to help the businesses. And I know, like I have so much faith in our community that we are gonna support these businesses and help them rebuild. Um, you know, it was nice to hear that Paints provided breakfast, um, you know, and I just, again, I want to extend my gratitude to our staff. The, the city manager was out there, you know, Mr. Mayor was out there um, I was when out I woke there. up this morning. And then last, of course, and last but not, <laughs> certainly not most least, probably the most important is our first responders. I am indebted to you guys, our entire city is. Thank you for working 24 hours a day to keep our city safe. Um, 
to the policemen and to the fire department. We appreciate you and we're very grateful for all that you do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I too want to uh, thank <laughs> Hollister Rec. What a great job you did with the uh, event on Saturday. And uh, it's so special to see the kids uh, driving by and just so excited in the back seats getting their, their goodie bags and just the way you guys were able to rethink this whole thing and make it happen. It's, it's just, it was great. And I just can't thank Hollister Rec, all of you guys, everybody involved to making that happen, all the sponsors, just so much fun and just seeing our kids happy. Well, well worth it. City manager, I wanted to thank you for the early morning uh, notice of what was happening in our city. Very important and you didn't hesitate to contact us even though it was so early in the morning. Let us know so we were able to uh, get out and see what was going on. And of course, the firefighters, of course, are our own firefighters, but those from all the neighboring communities that made their way out here from Monterey, Salinas, just on and on, they came out to help us and make sure our, our downtown was safe. And just really seeing that kind of teamwork is really inspiring. And of course, our law enforcement officers that are out there right now doing the job they need to do to investigate the, the cause of this fire. Just amazing to see that type of teamwork go into action and our community pulling together. My prayers, my condolences to the business owners. Heartbreaking to see the losses. These businesses, all of us know so, so well and our families have been um, customers for so long and we, I'm sure, will do anything we can to help you and obviously the community is giving you their support and their love too. So prayers for you all. We'll get through this and we'll get some of the answers of what happened. Also, I wanted to thank, to thank the uh, staff, the downtown street that was mentioned earlier by Mr. Perez is just looking wonderful. That was the uh, bright spot of today is seeing the striping going on and how beautiful our downtown mm -hmm. is going to look and having so many people walking around looking at it and just complimenting the ideas of what's gonna happen there. Very exciting. Our new downtown is coming soon and I just can't wait to see it all start to happen. With that, we'll go to city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, like I said, being notified first thing in the morning, I'd like to the, uh, thank the, the fire chief for uh, w waking me up about three o'clock in the morning uh, to notify us. Uh, but kind of go circle back to the rec staff. I really want to uh, thank them for, and their, their volunteers and, and their sponsors. That the Treats Treats was an incredible event. Uh, Tina and her staff did, did an incredible job. I and your love, son. Yeah. My, your my, son volunteered. Yeah, yes, that's correct. He got, volu got volunteered. Well, <laughs> he, was very, he, he helped me and he's very sweet. But thank you. I will pass that to, <coughs> along to him. But it was a great, a great moment. It was, uh, like I say, seeing all the kids smiling. It, it was a, a very, very much a bright spot to us. Mm -hmm. And kind of going full, uh, complete opposite direction. I really want to thank the fire personnel and plus all the agencies that responded. It was amazing that once again, uh, we had two different buildings that were caught on fire and they kept them to those, just to those buildings, just like they did the, the other downtown building that burned down. It, it is, I want to say, they just do an amazing job to make sure that our, our downtown doesn't go any further. And same with the uh, police personnel that are doing the investigation and, and doing a pro very professional job. And then, like the mayor said, for the downtown, uh, we are coming along. It will be one more day of uh, for the striping. It, it's, uh, taken longer than the one day that expected. So we'll hopefully we'll have that done tomorrow. We will start opening up the, the numbered streets. Uh, the San Benito Street will be still closed as we have different construction companies building the parklets out there. And plus we have a new road signage that we have to get up and we have to have those up before we can open up San Benito Street. But we will be doing it as quick as possible. Uh, as soon as we can, we will op open up San Benito Street for through traffic. 
but what our goal is right now is we are shooting for a ribbon cutting on November 14th to which is a Saturday to really just kind of showcase what our new downtown looks like and we're very excited and are trying to work on a few uh, socially responsible and socially distant activities at a, in a short notice to uh, to kind of celebrate that new look. So with that, I thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. We'll now go to the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, no statement. Thank you. The chief. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to Sorry, we got a little bit of feedback over here. Um, wanted to inform the council, and uh, uh, obviously you are aware that our detectives and officers have been working on this arson case from the wee hours of the morning. Um, the downtown surveillance cameras are very instrumental in this investigation. Right from the get-go, our d night shift officers uh, were able to locate a suspect vehicle in the vicinity of those fires. And the day shift officers were able to um, to uh, recognize the vehicle as someone they had contact before. So during the course of the day today, um, our officers have been looking for that vehicle. They located it at around noon today and we're conducting surveillance on that vehicle. At about two o'clock this afternoon, uh, the, vehicle, the person of interest was seen leaving and a felony car stop was conducted. Um, he was uh, taken into custody and um, uh, his vehicle seized and they're presently doing a search warrant in his home and uh, sub subsequently going to do a search warrant on the vehicle. And as I'm sitting here today, I've just been informed that uh, he has been booked at the San Diego County Jail on four counts of arson. Um, his name is David Anthony Pequeno. He's 21 years old out of Hollister. And um, I would like to thank, this is still an ongoing investigation. The vandalism charges are still pending and we do believe that they are uh, connected to the same person throughout the city. Um, but I would like to thank the partner agencies, the San Benito County Sheriff's Office have been very helpful with the arson task force team. Monterey County uh, with the fire department, Cal Fire, ATF, like I mentioned before, this is still an ongoing investigation and their part is still um, essential uh, for the completion and the prosecution of this case. But one final thing, <clears throat> Like I said, there's still ongoing, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but one thing I think is really important is at this time the investigation has revealed no information that this crime, these arsons and vandalisms are in any way connected to a political movement or the election in any way. And uh, I think that's important for the people to know. We've been, people have been um, um, worried about it being something of that sort. And um, as, of, as of this point, there is no indication that this is political, no indication that it's related to the election in any way. So thank you. Good job, good job. Thank you, Chief. City Clerk. Um, I do have something to report. Um, the City Clerk's office has um, noticed in the newspaper that we're accepting applications for the airport advisory commission the parks and recreation commission and the planning commission so um, we just want to um, invite more people to apply um, the application is on the the city clerk's page on the website and you can also get applications from city hall and um, Definitely District 1 and 4 and the, the mayor at large. And then I think there's a few others that may have recently resigned or are planning to at the end of the year. So I would just encourage anyone from any district to apply, even, even if there's not an opening, um, they still may be considered. And that's it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Thank you very much. We will now move to item G3. Who's reporting on the appeal? Oh. Oh, Maria. Good evening once again. Um, I'd like to inform the council 
that the city of Hoster received a request from Asma Law Firm to appeal the decision made by the city council on August 3rd of 2020, revoking cannabis regulatory permits for Agropharma LTD. On August 3rd of 2020, the city council adopted resolutions 2020-142, 2021-43, and 2021-44, revoking cannabis regulatory permits for agropharma extraction, agropharma nursery, and agropharma distribution. On September 16th of 2020, Asmob Law Firm submitted a letter of notice of appeal to the city attorney in accordance with section 5.42270 of the City of Halter Cannabis Ordinance and Municipal Code any decision regarding or pertaining to the regulatory permit process may be appealed. Essentially, the appellant would like an opportunity to speak on its client's behalf as an, interest, as an interested party, as opposed to a member of the public under the three minutes that are permitted and provide evidence supporting its client's position. Staff recommends the City Council set an appeal hearing date for November 16th, 2020. There are any questions? Any questions from council? So you need a consensus to bring it back on the uh, for the, on the 16th. 16th. Okay. Do we have any speaker cards before we discuss that? There are no speakers. All right. Is there any questions or comments from council? No. Is there a consensus to bring this in, on November 16th? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, there's a consensus. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Maria. We will now move to item G4. No, you want to take you want me to take this? Yeah, no, I okay. just forgot that this was my item. Right. Um, so this is, um, staff has re received requests from the community to start holding the youth committee meetings again, now that we have teleconferencing in, in place. Um, so back in April, city council adopted a resolution canceling all ad hoc committee meetings um, including the youth committee. Um, so we're requesting that the youth committee meetings can be held again um, virtually, um, but we need the council's approval to um, resume the, the meetings. Thank you. Is there any questions from council? Uh, not necessarily a question, but a request. Go ahead, sir. Okay, um, Nova, the, the children that have been contacting us, I think they're involved like in the ASB at the high school. And there's like an email chain going on with this, these kids that have been requesting this. Can when and if it gets approved, then we when and if we post applications, can we ensure that those children um, get like emails or something notifying them of that? Yeah, um, we have already received some applications and um, once we receive consensus from the council, we'll put out more um, requests for anyone else who may be interested in applying and then um, it'll come back to council to a point um, from the pool of applicants and then from there, then the meetings can resume. Right now, I don't think they have enough members to even have a quorum. So the first step is to get consensus tonight to resume the meetings and to um, give direction to start uh, requesting applications. We've already received some, but it would only be fair to open it up to everybody and allow for more people to apply. But we'll definitely respond to each applicant to let them know what um, stage of the process we're in. Absolutely, and then if you wanna to put together a quick digital flyer, like I'd be more than happy to post that on my social medias just to help put the word out. Okay, yeah, well, I'm sure we'll work with um, Daisy to help do a social media post about requesting applications just to help spread the word. Perfect, thank you guys. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from council? 
Yeah, Mary. I would also oh, like that sent to me so I could put it out on my social media. Yes, to all of us. Is there any speaker cards? Yeah, Mary, if I could add, uh, myself and staff member Daisy Caceres has been working with the youth committee, and I got to tell you, it is very, a very rewarding committee to to be with. We've had some very intelligent uh, young adults helping us, and it's amazing. Uh, what Hollister has for the future. And I just want to uh, thank, uh, hopefully the council will bring, moving this forward because we do have some bright people that we want to get started again. And, and we will, Daisy will do her, her utmost to get everything out to you in a timely basis if this passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a consensus from council to restart the youth council? Sounds yeah. good. Good. There's a consensus. Yeah. Great. Love to see them back. Absolutely. Thank you very much. There is no business on H I J or K. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. We adjourn. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion is second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Motion carries. And good night, everyone.